Okay, good morning, folks. We're going to be looking at the trailer from IGN released two days ago on the behind-the-scenes teaser about Dragon Age 4. Unfortunately, there's really not much content there, but there's a lot of people we've never seen before and some we have. And that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about their backgrounds, what this means to Dragon Age 4 going forward, because, oh boy, lots of expectations and not a lot of information. So, But we got to see some people, so that's good. for a really long time, so I've got to see it grow up and turn from a from a company of 35 people to a company of more than 300 people. Okay, so Mark Dara, he's one of the older names there at uh, Bioware. Let's see, he's worked on uh, Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age 2, Dawn of the Seeker, I don't know what Requiem is, and Anthem. So, uh, fantastic stuff, uh, at least Origins was. Everything after Origins has been crap. DA2, crap. Dawn of the Seeker, oh God. I, I made a video about that a while ago. Don't go watch that movie. Go watch the video and see how bad it is. Don't know what Requiem is, and God knows we have to bash on Anthem anymore. So, yeah, he's been with Bioware for a long time. Um, but all he's got to his name to be impressed by is back in 2009. amazing people in the industry there's amazing stories to be told with other people I okay graham scott who the heck is graham scott don't know let's find out senior designer at bioware okay he's been at bioware for uh 2007 wow not much to say about this guy he seems to be one of those dude behind the scenes i'm glad he's been there for that long he's obviously has some loyalty there but uh i need some more information on graham scott there sir so, you know, as a marketing material, this isn't really helping me. I need names. I need to know what he's good for. I need to know what he's done. That's what I want. Throwing names with, with no information doesn't help. I love that character so much. <laughs> yeah, I love characters. That's great. Thanks. Yeah. We're very experimental here at Bioware. So we're always coming up. Melissa Janowitz. Okay. Gameplay designer. Let's see what we got here. Uh, been at Bioware for three years. That's not great. But that's definitely not bad. Game design team. And obviously she's working on Dragon Age, unless why would they showcase her in this video? So three years. Hey, good for you. Up with new stuff. Uh <laughs> We're always trying to improve, innovate, and bring new characters to life for our players and fans to enjoy. Okay, John Rennish. Here we go. Uh, one of the bigger names there. Technical director at Bioware. Been there for five years. Before that, he was at Ubisoft for three years. So he was starting off as a lead systems programmer, then the foundation area supervisor of the Pillar Tech for the upcoming Dragon Age title. So, okay. Lead system programmer for Anthem originally. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's cool. I, I think that's a cool dude. I mean, technically he's doing stuff. I'm, I'm all for it. He got credited in Undertale for whatever reason. But again, this is not marketing material. Maybe someone like me would care about this, but I mean, do you care that he was a technical director since this year in June for three months? I don't think so. Joy. The world of Dragon Age really has got it all. God. Okay, Matthew Golden, here we go. Uh, creative director of Dragon Age Bioware. Uh, been there for 11 years. Good sign. Uh, he's worked on, let's see, Dragon Age Origins. Good. Dragon Age 2, not so good. Dragon Age Inquisition, meh. Andromeda, oh dear. Unannounced project since December 2015. So Dragon Age has been working on, has been worked on for at least five years from this fellow. And... He's obviously done many things from principal visual director to creative director. So he's obviously a very visual guy. He draws, he does artwork, etc. Frontier stories, it's got mystery, it's got hard-boiled detective stories. Okay, um, yes, Dragon Age has a multitude of genres. I don't think hard-boiled detective is one of them in a fantasy setting. The best we can get is maybe some stories or books that came out 
outside of the Dragon Age games. Yes, there are quests in Dragon Age where you have to go investigate stuff, but it's never handled like a murder investigation or a hard-boiled style. It's just there is a quest to go do. You go investigate. You f- you fight some baddies, and there could be a corpse lying on the ground, or you find some trinket and return it to someone. That's typical quest mechanics at all. So, I would never associate the hard-boiled subgenre of detective fiction with Dragon Age. It just doesn't fit. Now, if they had a story just on that, that would be interesting, but they don't. They should have done that with with Mass Effect. If they can do that with Dragon Age, that would work. But again, it's not... There is no detective character. Not even the Inquisitor, which it should have been in Dragon Age Inquisition, was a detective. So... And of course, it's all wrapped up in kind of a fantasy setting. You really feel like... Esther Co. Okay, let's see what we got Esther Co. here. Lead creature animator at Bioware. All right, maybe that's the truth. I know we've had some odd stories on Twitter. Uh, She's been there for two years. That's, you know, something. Uh, Gameplay animator, uh, August 28th or 2018. For Anthem and Anthem Live. All right. Uh, Remember, just an animator, not a game designer. Just an animator. So I don't know who this video is for, but... We've got some random person who's been there for two years who's doing animation, and now she's the lead. Uh, good good for her. Hope everything works out there, Esther, but uh, not impressing me. You're the hero in the Dragon Age world, and you're saving people. Okay, here's Luke Christensen. And Luke, oh boy, where, where do we start with Luke? What a, what a guy. Uh, he wrote the DLC Leliana song and also co-wrote the plot for a paragon of her kind, with Jennifer Hepler back on Origins. Uh, Luke has been with the company for a long, long time. The Old Republic, uh, Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, Neverwinter, KOTOR, Jade Empire. He's done a lot of writing. I've been researching him for another video, but let's see. Uh, (laughs) He did Aveline and Carver. Aveline I liked, Carver Carver was nondescript. So there's there's like, ah, and there's like, hmm, okay. Inquisition, senior writer, responsible for Sarah, as well as a main quest in your heart shall burn. So obviously there's lots of writers in the writing room for Dragon Age and all the pretty much all the games of Bioware. But when you tell me he's the lead writer for Sarah, I guess someone had to do it. Like I'm trying to be nice here since I'm going to be doing a video about Sarah soon. But, oh boy, Lucas, what happened to you, sir? And again, who cares? No one know, no one knows this dude. He's not very a prominent figure, but this is all they've got to pull out of the woodwork. So Bravo, Bioware. You, you got my attention, but unfortunately no one else cares. Dragon Age to me is a wonderful world to play in. I am really excited about the future. A wonderful world to play in is an okay thing for a writer to say <laughs> about a franchise he's been working on for, well, since the beginning. Uh, future of Dragon Age. This is an original world, original flora, original wildlife. Okay, uh, Dragon Age, uh, I don't think is that original. It's basically a giant melting pot of every fantasy trope you can put together. And as a result, it has to be dark fantasy because there's some dark fantasy stuff out there. If you want to see more original stuff, go to books. Go to the Conan series. That's the longest running one. There's all kinds of stuff happening there. All kinds of different writers. But Dragon Age being original, it's an original IP, but there's nothing inherently original about it. Having a dreamlike world where magic comes from has been done to death, as have every single trope in the fantasy genre. So saying the fantasy genre as a whole is original is like saying, you know, we're not using Tolkien as an influence. It's like, really? Okay, where are you coming from then? That's that's where I want to see it. If they can subvert Tolkien, then it's original to me. If there are no vampires or no ghosts or no goblins or or no orcs or what have you, then you have my attention. But I know Dragon Age. Dragon Age is not original. It's literally an amalgamation of all the other fantasy genres. Original architecture. That makes it fun to explore and discover. Now, if you're not able to, like, jump across this chasm or fly, I don't care about your level design. I really don't. 
Are you a platformer game or not? If you're a platformer, allow me to jump, allow me to grapple, allow me to make bridges, allow me to do something. Because if you're just showing me stuff off in the distance I can't get to, I don't care. And if you're not open world, like a lot of open world games say, every every mountain you see, you can climb it. It's like, great. Are there hidden walls? Do I have grappling tools? If not, then it's just normal levels. If I'm not jumping, if I'm not flying, I don't get where, if I don't get somewhere differently than just walking, I'm really not that interested. In the next Dragon Age, you get an opportunity to, to see new things, new places, and interact with people who lived and grew up in these spaces as well. That's every game ever, but thanks anyway. Oh boy, Patrick Weeks. For the game we're working what have you done to yourself, sir? I mean, I guess your shirt is matching your hair, but you know. Uh, now we want to tell a story. What happens when you don't have power? Well, Patrick, uh, that was the story of Dragon Age 2 and every story Bioware has ever done. You start off from nothing and you build yourself up. The problem with Dragon Age 2 is you become someone important, but you have you can't do anything with it. The choices don't matter. I mean, you even lose your family in the process. So, well, that, that, yeah, yeah, Patrick. Let's see. I mean, uh, Patrick is a hits and misses for the same same world as as Bioware in general. So he wrote Cole, Solus, Iron Bull, Krem, the Bulls Chargers, uh, Here Lies the Abyss, and Trespassers. So. You know, the Trespasser DLC was arguably the most important DLC of Inquisition because Inquisition, Inquisition was so stupid. So thankfully, Trespasser DLC came by. But you can already tell from his haircut um, or his hair color what kind of writer he is. And if you don't know who Krem is or any of these other guys, uh, good luck. But yeah, he's not a bad writer. He's just got some issues that some people don't like. But... If he's a lead, which I think he is, let's just go back here. Lead writer, there, yeah, he's the lead. So you know what to expect from Dragon Age 4, guys. For the game we're working on now, we want to tell a story. What happens when you don't have power? What happens when the people in charge aren't willing to address the issues? Wow, every Dragon Age game, thanks, fantastic. Every Bioware game, for, for that matter. The things that you could John Epler, okay. Narrative directors I can get behind because they're kind of like the writer's uh, boss. The guy who sees the narrative as a whole and figures out where to go. So here is uh, John Epler. He's been on since Origins. You know, this is a guy I can respect. 12 years, all this detail on his LinkedIn. This is the kind of stuff you want to see if you're, you know, a potential hirer. 2007, he started in QA, became an analyst in QA, started doing design for cinematics. So either he was doing the actual modeling and animation or he's using the tool. So he was really, he was doing the grunt work. He built himself up. He worked on Trespasser. He worked on Jaws of a Con. Lead cinematic designer for Dragon Age in general. Lead narrative system designer. And now he's the narrative director. So I can, I can be impressed by this guy. The problem is I got blocked on Twitter. I have no idea why. And now that could just be a completely separate thing as it usually is. But something tells me uh, we know exactly his politics and why and what kind of game he's making. And when you have Patrick Weeks behind the writing team and he's, you know, list, he's taking cues from John Epler, you can pretty much guess how Dragon Age is going to turn out expect in the next installment are going to be stories that focus on the people around you and the wow the, the stories that focus on the people around you where have i heard that before friends and family you make jen chevry uh, associate producer okay who's jen let's see uh jen chevry or chevry seven years very good uh, always good to see past five years at any company uh, let's see she was a again qa to, I, this is what i like i like seeing people who have been there, and she's been at Bioware for nine years apparently since June 2011, worked on Mass Effect 3, Extended Cut, and Leviathan. So started off as a tester, went to senior testing, so she did that for four years, three or four years. St went to QA, same idea, QA project lead. for. So she's been doing QA for seven years at Bioware, and then somehow became an associate producer, interesting, 
not unheard of. Uh, the people that go from QA to produ- pr- to production, so they know the quality of the product, so they're going to lead the production of the product. I've heard that in software before. Not necessarily gaming, but okay. The problem is it's Mass Effect 3, Inquisition, and Anthem. This is the quality control person. As much as I respect her, her seven years, at, or you know, nine years apparently at Bioware, we're talking about Inquisition and Anthem, and you were the producer of that, or associate producer. That does not make me happy. And considering this is a marketing material, no one knows who you are in the first place, and for us to do homework is like, oh. Something that we'll be able to look forward to in Dragon Age is a really close relationship with game characters who really... Again, close... This is... Every game should have close relationship with your characters. That's normal. Become real for you. We want characters to either be loved or hated. Okay, so when you write a character that's going to be loved or hated, or if this is your philosophy, rather, to write characters one way or the other, you have to write them only one way. Like the hero's romantic interest, for example. That's like, make her or him pure of heart. Make them completely likable and cute and attractive on all levels, and you're going to like them. You want to make a villain? Make them completely evil, completely dark, foreboding, powerful, etc. Go go use all the tropes p- possible and make them one way or the other. Solus is not that. Solus is a great character. He starts off sort of likable in general. He has his own attitudes towards the Elven and being very elvish, obviously. But then we see he becomes a villain. So now there's a there's a sh- he goes from white to dark or from light to dark. So there's a transition there. So that transition is called gray. You can start gray or you start out or you go to from from white to dark and that's gray anyway. So I don't know what this dude's saying anymore. <laughs> but Solus is gray. He might be a villain, but he's still a gray villain. One of the best examples of that is Solus. Half the community wants to Okay, showing me facial rig animation, you know, Bioware, uh, the ZBrush? I think it's ZBrush. I can't tell. Kill him. Half the people want to marry him. Then another part want to do both. So you've just contradicted yourself, sir. You've said we write characters one way or the other. And then you said the fans want to love him and marry him. The fans want to kill him. And then there's another group who want to do both. You're like, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? Do you understand logic? What's going on here? They call me the Dread Wolf. What will they call you? When this is over. Okay, so here's Solus in a very bad recording because, you know, whatever he's doing is not very good mic uh, sound quality. But this is what you do. You showcase the guy, the main villain of Dragon Age Inquisition, and saying, yep, we're going to continue this story. So this is the kind of talent you want to see on the screen from actors, uh, a name we might, or at least a voice we recognize. This is what you do for marketing material. Obviously not in this capacity, but, you know, this year, I think we can forgive a lot of things as a result of the virus. Bioware and EA has been one of the forerunners in using motion magic technology. Uh, maybe whatever motion magic technology is, I don't know. But if you're talking about motion capture, I don't think of Bioware ever. The only thing I think of Bioware over is their introduction to Mass Effect when they had fully articulated talking heads. That's what I think of Bioware as. And they're not even the best at it anymore. They're good, but you can, I've been watching a lot of Inquisition for research. A lot of the facial rigs and the, the actual lines said do not line up with the talking heads that they had, they had in Inquisition. So for them to say that their, their motion capture outside of talking heads is, is the best or whatever, it's like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. You don't even come close to what The Witcher is doing. And that makes it way more realistic. And not to say other forms of motion capture like on, uh, was that detective game? That noir game, I can't remember. But uh, a killer, amazing, realistic detective, or sorry, uh, facial rig animation. When you're looking at the characters and the way they walk and move and interact in the world. 
players want in that suspension of disbelief that this willing suspension of disbelief thank you sylvia feke Takuti. Wonderful collection of digital pixels is actually a living, breathing soul. No. So I like that. Uh, let's 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 see uh, Sylvia. Where is she? Let me get her. There it is Sylvia. There we go. The reason why someone like me would get off on Sylvia is because she actually is a good writer. Because we've seen her write for Lair of the Shadow Broker, handled most of Farron and the Shadow Broker DLC, which is the best part, in my opinion of the Mass Effect franchise. That was the most meaningful, the most dramatic. It was the tightest written, as again, my opinion. So she also wrote Liara and Glyph for Mass Effect 3, the art at Yaksha, Yakshi Monastery, which was fine, the Geth Consensus and the Rescue of an Admiral. Uh, that was a weird one. So she's got some She's got some talent. She's got some skills, okay? Um, she did a third of the Citadel, and various game descriptions and other such things. So yeah, she worked on Inquisition as well. Ah, did some writing for the Dragon Age books. Great. Still, we're talking about Inquisition. Still, we're talking about Mass Effect 3. I can respect her work for Lair of the Shadow Broker, though. So again, for me, I'm impressed. For someone who knows the writing or the writers of Bioware Games, but for the average consumer watching IGN, like, who is this? Sylvia, what? She a living, breathing soul. No, 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 it's okay. So, Bilara Ji Young Han, voiceover. I don't know who Bilara is. I've done some research, but couldn't find much. The only thing I could find was from the mobile game Age of Magic. Is the caster of Barbarians fact? Like, I don't know if this is going to be true. It's not uncommon for Bioware to take characters from other, other games, like... Uh, uh, Mass Effect Galaxy, like Jacob, and put them into their main game, so Mass Effect 2. Great, cool. I'm glad you're you're reusing assets and storylines, but Bolara who? Ji Young Han who? Like, I don't know who this is. You're not a... Where's uh, Claudia Black? You know, give me a name I recognize, a big name that's been in all the games. Just do that. Bosses. I help with the creature design team as well. Okay. So I do all of like the big threats that you have to go up against. Nope. So again, we're, we're being shown this testing gameplay thing, which is fine. But it's been five, six years. This is all they've got. I know Anthem and, and Andromeda were a big deal, but this is not working, guys. This is something not even someone, a, a small studio would showcase. They would show, pre, they would show rendered stuff. Not this. Nobody dies on my watch. For the wardens. Ike Imadi, voiceover artist for Davrin. Who is this guy? Who is Davrin? I, I did some searches, couldn't find a darn thing. Choice is a big part. Andre Garcia, gameplay director. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, so I did some searches, couldn't find a, a darn thing. Andre Garcia, been there for two years, four months, Bioware. Did not fill out anything else. He could be great. I mean, he's been working at Ubisoft and Hangar 13, LucasArts. If you've been working at LucasArts, I think you know your stuff. And EA game design for seven years. So he's he's been around. He's got he's got his chops, but we don't know in what capacity. And it can only be for, for the next Dragon Age, because he started in 2018. So he's a veteran, but not a veteran at Bioware. So it could be great. But, meh, gameplay director, okay, that's cool. Again, don't know who he is, who he is, don't know what he's done. And they need to, they need to showcase these guys better. They need to tell us what he's done, because I don't know what he's done. This, this LinkedIn article is nothing, it's just LucasArts, game design, lead game design. Like, for what? What did you do? Part of what Dragon Age is as a franchise, the decisions you make can affect change in the world. Decision making. Katrina Barkwell, RPG programmer. Okay, again, I, literally who? No idea. But she is a software dev. And uh, it seems that she's a native to either Edmonton or where is she? Manitoba. Okay, so she graduated from the University of Manitoba did a co-op work term for 
almost a year at BioWare and then got hired as a software dev for two years. So she's young, but she's been around. She's a smart girl. We'll give her that. But again, not impressing me. Nothing to nothing to put into a marketing material. It can mean that a party member lives or a party member dies. And it means owning your outcome and reactivity to the choices that you do make. I just love the possibilities that Dragon Age offers us, and I'm excited to explore a lot more of them. To me, that potential is what gets you up in the morning. It's a fantastic opportunity every time. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for thanks for telling us about absolutely nothing on the game. You showed some screenshots or rather some concept arts and some work in progress uh, gameplay testing. That's it. Some voice actors I've never heard of, characters I've never heard of aside from Solus. This is not marketing. This is this is what you don't do, guys. Okay? <laughs> I know it's been tough on everyone this year for work and production. You don't do this. You don't do it this way. There are better ways to do it. Anyway, I thought I'd break it down, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, a lot of names that I didn't recognize, and so far I'm really not impressed by how they showcase this. And um, I don't know. Maybe you guys have better insight. Maybe you, you zoomed in on some of these concept arts or maybe some of the gameplay scenes that you liked. If you did, please leave them in the comments below. I'd like to know what's so great about this. I'm not impressed, but hey, thanks for listening and have yourself a great day.